We're going to create a, an occupancy load schedule real quick. I don't know if this answers your question or not, but nevertheless, here it is. Um, so I have a really simple Revit um, file here. If we zoom in, you have some offices, a few galleries, and a lobby. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a schedule that's going to take a look at some of these things. So I'll go to View, and then Schedule Quantities. And I'm going to schedule rooms, so I'm going to scroll down and select rooms. And we're going to schedule the phase new construction. And we'll click OK. And it's like, what would you like to schedule? Well, I would like the area. I would like the name, the number, and the occupancy. And I would like the name to be the first one, and the number to be the second one, and the occupancy to be the third one. Now we're going to need a load factor, and we're going to need to calculate how many occupants we have based on the load factor. But we're going to do that in a separate place. Um, so I'm going to click OK, and it's going to shoot that schedule up. Um, we could go ahead and fill in the occupancy type here. So like for office, I could type in, you know, like B-1. Right, and then do the same thing, B1, B1. And this is just really just labeling these as a particular type, so A-3, whoops, shift A-3. And that's just for your information, right? For Pete's sake, 3. Okay, A-3, and we'll put the lobby at an A-3 as well. Um, so we've got area. Now what we need is a load factor, right? And we also need to see how many people are going to be in those areas. So um, I'm going to add a load factor row here. And to do that, I actually have to go to Manage and Project Parameters. And I'm going to add a project parameter. I'm going to call it load factor. And it's very important that you use the correct type of parameter, because it's not a length parameter, it's actually an area. It's like 7 per square foot, 100 per square foot, so it's an area factor. So I'm going to click on area, and then I'm going to group the parameters under identity data, because that's where all the other stuff is grouped, and you'll see that in a minute. And then I'm just going to come down here and pick rooms. So it's going to add this selection to it for us. So I'm going to click OK. And it's going to say, hey, would you like to assign the value to the current selected elements? And you just say, sure. And you click OK, and you click OK. And so now what we need to do, if we go back to fields, you're going to see that load factor show up. And you can add that after the area. So now if you click OK, you can come in and start filling in your load factor. So if the load factor for the assembly area is 7, right, you can come in and you can pick 7. Oops nine, seven, right? And then you can come in and fill all these in, you know, with the correct load factor for whatever they are. Okay, so now you've got those load factors in there. Now we just need to make a calculated value to figure out how many people are going to be in there. So in order to do that, we go back to our fields and we add a calculated value. So this is just Excel, right? It's just a dorky Excel. So I'm going to name this occupant load. All right, it's going to be a formula. Number is fine. We could actually use integer if we wanted to, but let's just go ahead and use number. An occupant load is going to be the area divided by whoops, the area divided by the load factor. Right? And then we click OK and it puts that up there as our occupant load and we click OK. And now we have occupant loads, load factors based on square footages. So we can go in and format that occupant load so it's not so ugly. Go into field format 
and just use fixed to zero decimal places. You can also calculate totals on that if you want to. Um, what else would we do? Maybe calculate totals on the area as well. And then under sorting and grouping, you can tell it to do grand totals and totals only. And now you've got your total occupant load and based on that. Now we can do some further divisions and such if we wanted to, sorting and grouping. The other thing you could do, and I'll just throw this in for fun, is you could add another calculated column that takes your occupant load and calculates the exit requirement if you know what your your calculator is. So you could come into fields, make another calculated value and call that exit width total and in that formula, right, you would have the occupant load and you would multiply that times 0.3 inches or whatever your calculator is, 0.3 and then inches and you click OK. Oops. And it threw up that error message because I'm giving it a number, which is a whole number. And actually what you want is a length because it's going to be in inches. So I'm changing that to length and click OK. Now you've got your exit width total and you can click OK. And now you've got, you know, that calculating out as well. All right. So I don't know if that answers your question. If you want to add the occupancy type to or the the occupancy load to the tag that labels the room, we're going to have to add a shared parameter and that's a little bit different. So let me know if that's what you want and we can do that. All right.